original. En original podcast fra Arrow. Velkommen til Innovators Club. Rigtig god fornøjelse med dagens episode. Well, hello everyone and welcome to this technical session. This time we also have Massimo and Ida in the studio, but we will do a, a more technical deep dive. So uh, just a quick introduction. My name is Martin Fischer. I'm responsible for the ISV program in Aero Denmark. And uh, today we have also Massimo and Ida. And Ida, if you would like to do a quick introduction to you. Yes. Um Happy to be here again. Uh, and if you uh, didn't listen in on the first session, I'm Ida. I am working in uh, Microsoft Denmark in our what we call ISV team. So working with everything from early startups to more mature ISVs. Uh, we have also Massimo in the team, who is one of our cloud solution architects, focused a lot on our Azure App Services, but especially also on Marketplace. So now he will uh, do a crazy thing and dance for you guys with the technical aspects of getting to Marketplace. I think we will revisit the SaaS Accelerator, uh, which yes. is a tool for you guys to deploy your solution on the marketplace. We will go a little bit into the subscriptions flow and the possibilities with geographies, and then we will finish up with the, how you can actually transact through the marketplace so you see the possibilities both with direct customers but also all the possibilities you will have uh, partnering up with Arrow. You already introduced me, but yes, yes uh, I'll work with you, Ada, uh, yes. <laughs> in the ISV team as a cloud solution architect. I'm I'm so excited to to continue this session um, where I left uh, uh, in the previous one, um, and um, so I said a little, uh, you know, comeback uh, summary. Um, I said. Um, I highlighted how the process is to put the, your offer in the marketplace um, from a marketing perspective, perspective, legal perspective, pricing perspective, but also technical perspective. And this is where um, some uh, small development is needed. Um, I believe it's the smallest part of all of it, but anyway, it needs to be done. Um, and um, I get again this uh, very beautiful uh, slide. Um, I love the a, landscape. A, 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 little, a little bit uh, messy slide, but I believe uh, it gives the idea uh, at the end. Uh, and they say the customer goes into the marketplace. Uh, I'm getting my pointer back. In marketplace, get it now. Uh, they open the Azure portal, choose the plans. Uh, they subscribe and they get subscribed in Azure, but not Uh, uh, at your end, mm -hmm. that means that they need to click on configure account now, and then there is some implementation that needs to be done at your end uh, as an ISV, a landing page, uh, and a, an admin page. Then you need to deploy the solution. Then you activate the uh, the, the customer, and then the billing starts. Um, I explained a little bit slower in the other uh, session, so go back and and listen to that one exactly. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Um, I say three possibilities, do it yourself, SaaS accelerator, 50% control, uh, the one that I prefer the most, uh, and Mona, where you have maybe 25% control uh, over it. Uh, it means from a customer customization perspective. SaaS accelerator delivers you basically everything, uh, landing page requests uh, uh, for subscriptions, activation of users, custom meters is also implemented. And if you don't know what are custom meter, please listen to the previous session. So the SaaS accelerator uh, architecture, I say, is uh, uh, there are two web apps, uh, pretty straightforward, uh, and uh, a database connected to to this um, uh, SQL database. Uh, so two apps connected to the SQL database, and then the webhook that is communicating with the Microsoft. Um, So the admin page uh, reads uh, from uh, the SQL server, sorry for the spelling here, and the admin page uh, as well. Uh, the web book will write to, to the server based on the, on the uh, I would say, actions uh, handling uh, that, that will, uh, will, uh, will happen in the Azure marketplace. And the, for the people that is already subscribed, it can be that they want to change plan and you change plan in the admin page. So it's going to be an event uh, that is going to be fired. Uh, you want to change the quantity. Uh, they have a number of users and that they want to increase the number of users. Then they can do that. You can do and change the quantity. Uh, you want to have a renewal. And the renewal is quite important because you're going to have auto renewal or uh, manual renewal. 
Um, and the auto renewal means that no matter what, they're going to continue to pay uh, as much as long as they don't decide to stop to stop it. Mm-hmm. The manual renewal is I need to I would like to handle uh, contractually speaking every year a new price. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I decide to do a manual uh, renewal. But couldn't you in an auto renewal also have that if you change the price, then the auto renewal will just be on the new price? In theory, no, because uh, contractually speaking, it, it, it belongs to the, the contract of the, for instance, if it's three years contract, so it's the renewal of that contract there, then you need to change it, uh, the okay. contract, yeah. Um, suspend. Ta-dum. <laughs> also very important. You mm-hmm. need to know when they are in suspend. And it happens when it never happened, but if Microsoft do not get the payment from, from a customer, uh, then... Um, 30 days after they get suspended and unsubscribed. And you need to know that as an SV. Yeah, because course. if you have your solution up and running for that customer and that customer gets suspended and unsubscribed, you need to timely um, deallocate the resources for that specific customer. So you need to remove that customer from your tenant. Um, yeah, and unsubscribe, they say that they are not using your solution. You need to know that and uh, it needs to be handled. Then from suspended state, they can go on uh, rain, rain state uh, state or unsubscribe. And then pandemic fulfillment start unsubscribed. There is no post events uh, there. What you need to know and uh, have as a prerequisites for using this as accelerator, uh, an Azure account with an Azure subscription, uh, Visual Studio uh, is a good fit. Uh, you need to have expertise in .NET Core. Uh, yes. <laughs> You need to be able to set up a GitHub uh, or, or Git repository, and you need to be able to run a deployment script. I mean, uh, those are really basic uh, operations that uh, anyone can do. Um, uh, not any anyone, but I mean, <laughs> most of the people. So far, we didn't uh, <laughs> no. find an ISV who didn't have someone in the organization being able to do this quite fast. No. Yeah. yeah. Super. Um, I will show you. I, I will ex- <laughs> <laughs> not to scare anyone out there. So yeah. No, 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 exactly. Jesus exactly. Christ, I'm not able to um, do that. <laughs> I, I, I will just show now here a, a kind of manual flow, uh, which is not the one that, that I, I, I suggest to do because the deployment script is covering all these steps. Um, it's just to highlight, you know, the steps that happens behind the scene. And uh, in the case, you know, something goes, goes wrong, you know uh, what has happened in that deployment script. Uh, in that deployment script, um, your apps are registered as a multi-tenant application in, into your Azure AD. Um, and uh, all the APIs are also registered to call the Azure Marketplace. Uh, the web book uh, is also uh, in the code base. Uh, then uh, you need to create a SQL server uh, uh, and the database with the schema. Uh, this is also in the deployment script. And uh, and then you will get out of the box these two apps, customer facing app and admin publisher app. And I will show a little bit the code as well. And then later on, you can deploy the solution to Visual Studio. But maybe this is a step that you will do when you dis- your uh, deployment script is already installed. It's already fired, so you already have the solution. Then you want to modify the code and then redeploy. You can do it easily uh, through the uh, Visual Studio. Okay. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Life cycle of self subscription. Uh, I believe I touched upon this a little bit. Um, it is it is not straightforward to 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 grab uh, completely the the subscription flow at, at first, and uh, it, it might get a little bit. Um, uh, you know, overwhelming these these uh, steps and states, uh, the typical state machine. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, but but it's just to highlight that um, you are as a customer subscribed. Uh, I will say two times: one time uh, with Microsoft and one time with the ISV. Mm-hmm. And then Microsoft and the ISV they agree. Okay, now is really subscribed uh, and now needs to pay uh, and deactivate it. So, for based on my experience, uh, this concept has not been uh, always scrapped in the right way. So, I did a couple of uh, new slides just to, to be sure that it is completely <laughs> understood. Um, so, a customer um, do this, get it now, and they subscribe as we have seen, right? Uh, and we say that it's subscribed, subscribed but not activated. Uh, but Microsoft knows 
that you showed interest in that and you are committing to buying this solution. Mm-hmm. But you are not committed yet. So subscribe but not activate, it means that they mm-hmm. have kind of uh, said, I would like to get this now, but they have not paid and do not have access to the solution. Exactly. exactly. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, uh, then they get uh, redirected to the landing page and they now here in the landing page confirm the subscription to the ISV. They are saying to the ISV, oh, I'm really ready to get your solution. Can you please activate me? But of course, the, as an ISV, I need to ask myself, did I deploy the solution for the for the customer, yes or no? Mm-hmm. If I did not deploy the solution, they do not need to pay because they are of not course. using the solution, <laughs> right? Yeah. So uh, this is also what I brought here, right? And no, so you stay in the in the loop of let's not activate it. If you did deploy the solution, it means that you are already by now delivering the service to your customer. It means that you are paying for the infrastructure costs. You have allocated some resources for a number of users. Now they need to pay. So you go to the underwin page and you activate the subscription. And it's only here that the magic happened. You get the money. The, the billing process will start. The invoicing mm-hmm. process will start. Tax creation and so on. I did another one for the private offer, but the public private offer, I want to show another slide uh, first, Um, because there is a a difference between the public offer and the private offer. Um, So you need to think about the public offer as an offer that is uh, visible, accessible everywhere globally or in the market that you have selected, 141. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then this visibility to, with all these customers can lead to one of these customers that wants to buy your product, uh, but of course they want to negotiate, as we say uh, in sales term, right, yeah. uh, the price. So what will normally happen is they will be contacted, you will be contacted as an ICV, then you get in contact with the customer. You use your traditional Communication uh, channels can be emails, uh, uh, on-site meetings, whatever it is. Yep. Um, I just want to highlight that this happen outside the marketplace. We don't know anything about uh, how you handle your pricing with the specific customer. And once you have agreed on a price, then you are prepared to to do what we call uh, we will call a private offer. A private offer and you prepare this private offer also in the partner center, you prepare everything from the pricing model that you agreed with them, the currency that you want to get paid from Microsoft. And this is also pretty powerful. You can actually decide the currency where you want to get paid. Uh, If you want to get paid in US dollar, you get paid in US dollar, in Danish Corona, Mm. or I don't know, uh, other currencies. That's pretty cool. It's really cool. Then you put what I wrote here, uh, other terms and conditions. And usually these other terms and conditions are a specific contract, the traditional one. But just be mindful that the payment terms needs to link to Microsoft payment terms because Microsoft will then get the money for you mm-hmm. and then it will deliver the money for you with this 3% uh, fee. Yeah. Once the private uh, offer is, uh, is prepared, you submit it. And this private offer will show in the customer subscription and they can read the terms and condition, they can uh, see the price and they can accept the, the offer or not. And once the offer is accepted, then we go back to the flow of the landing page. Because when, once the offer is accepted, Microsoft knows that you are basically subscribed. But now you need to, sub- to activate them. Mm-hmm. So they will be redirected to the landing page again. They will resubscribe to you only. And then you will be, once you have deployed the solution, activate the customer. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is really a an option for ISVs to have more complex solution where they need special terms so that you have the possibility that uh, one size doesn't fit all. Yes. Um, um, and another thing that I believe you also mentioned in the uh, previous session, and if you didn't hear about the previous session, I invite you to listen to the previous <laughs> Definitely session. Definitely recommend yes, it. Yeah, yeah. I recommend it, yeah. <laughs> uh, because Ida was um, highlighting uh, how the marketplace is not really 
maybe business to consumer, right? Uh, it's business to business. Uh, and um, businesses, when they do agree on a price, they they do sit down and agree on a price. And usually it ends up in private offers, uh, private agreements. And this is the real power also of the marketplace. It is meant for businesses to transact um, with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, pretty powerful. Okay, now let me then... Uh, go back a bit and highlight the flow, uh, the different flow for a private offer. Um, there is one requirement uh, that an SV needs to uh, to give to the customer that they are transacting with, uh, and it's called the billing ID. Uh, I will show in the little uh, maybe uh, demo um, in a in a bit uh, how the billing ID is retrieved, mm -hmm. and uh, once you have the billing ID. You are basically uh, telling Microsoft, please get your money from there, uh, from this customer, this billing ID. And uh, you uh, publish the offer, the public offer. The public offer get placed in the, in the customer private offering management, which is under the marketplace uh, menu item, which I will show. Um, and the customer will accept and subscribe to this offer. They will be redirected to the landing page to confirm the subscription. And then yet again, the ISV needs to ask to himself, did I deploy the solution for the customer? Yes or no? If you didn't deploy, so you do not activate. If you deploy the solution, you do activate, and then you start the billing. Um, I just want to give you also a little time for reflection here. There is a very high trust between ISVs and Microsoft. Microsoft is trusting the ISV to deploy their solution and we are trusting that you are delivering the services and then you start the billing as well, right? Mm -hmm. So I believe this is also uh, pretty important uh, to have the right trust between uh, Microsoft and ISVs. Yeah, of course. Um, let me, before going on the, on the models, I want to show you a little bit what I mean about landing page. So, this is a typical landing page. Um, it's just a test uh, test page, which I deployed in uh, five minutes, some things like that. And um, and they will be redirected to a page uh, like this, and uh, they will get a, a subscribe button. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot do the entire, entire flow. Uh, but then, um, once they have subscribed, as you can see here, there is this pending fulfillment start. It means that they are yes subscribed in Microsoft, but not to your to the ISV. Oh, okay, yeah. right. Uh, that means that uh, me as an ISV in the admin page. This is an ad, this is the admin page, is the publisher portal. Um, I have um, I have an overview over plans, offers, the users that have access to this system, and the subscription. As you can see, I have here someone that has the pending fulfillment start. So this guy is ready to be activated. Um, so what I will normally do, I will go to my DevOps people and say, we need to do onboard this customer. He has 200 users, please onboard this customer. Uh, then when you are ready to, to get the customer onboarded with all the configuration, you can come back here and there is a little direction here, a little action that you can do activate. Oh. Uh, I'm not doing it, otherwise I'm going to pay. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, um, I would say um, this is API based. So um, in the I would say in the in the beginning you could use you can decide since you have maybe a, a small customer base to do it manually, uh, go on this page and do it. But since it's API based, you can easily do uh, through um, a DevOps uh, what you call an API and you, are, you activate the customer. And then it gets automatically built. Okay. Yeah. One question that I, I often uh, also get is, okay, I'm not going to do this website every day, right? Because mm. I, I'm, I have the work to do. I'm not checking this website every day. And the beauty with this is that, um, fortunately, there is a possibility to set up uh, SMTP uh, servers uh, for sending emails. Uh, when someone has subscribed, unsubscribed, or uh, a meter has changed, or stuff like that. And it's all configurable. Uh, I have nothing here, of course, uh, but 
um, it's, it's pretty straightforward. And then you get the email if someone uh, needs to, uh, an activation or a spending activation. This one. I would have get, gotten an email. Mm. Oh, someone has been interested. They, they want to be activated. And then they get it there. Mm-hmm. Um, then you have application logs and, um, and other things, uh, which is pretty, pretty powerful. Uh, from a SaaS accelerator perspective, so so you get out of the box the landing page and you get out of the box the admin page. Um, the SaaS accelerator, which is here, uh, commercial marketplace SaaS accelerator, I just took the uh, installation uh, guide here. You find a amazing video here, uh, and I invite you to 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 watch it. Uh, it's a step by step walkthrough of uh, the installation process and uh, even. Even more because it also tells you how to make um, a fork for your uh, Git repository and work on your own branch and uh, and and so on. And I know for sure that they're also willing to accept pull requests uh, in the case you have something new to contribute with. Uh, so I invite you to look at, it, uh, at this as well. Um, and the flow is you do uh, run this script uh, in your um, in your PowerShell uh, in, in the cloud shell if you want to, and. Uh, um, you define a resource group deployment type, uh, the publisher admin user. Uh, you can choose the location where do your solution uh, needs to be. Mm-hmm. I suggest, um, I mean, it, it doesn't really need to be a multi-region uh, application. I mean, this is really basic. It can be in one deployment in one region, and that's it. Um, it doesn't really require all this. Um, and then other optional installing parameter, uh, you can decide to install it in a tenant ID on a specific, with a specific subscription uh, on a specific uh, application ID uh, for the one who don't know what an application ID is. is basically an identifier of the application that you will usually re- register in the, in the Azure Active Directory and will give access to uh, to to that, and it will be registered as multi-tenant application. Um, application secret if you really want to, uh, and then uh, <laughs> they even added uh, that you can basically just put your own logo. I'm I'm also uh, you UI uh, freak somehow. Um, I, I, <laughs> I I I don't like this option so much, but anyway, you could do that. Um, um, so you have a full uh, full uh, capability on that. One thing that I want to also note um, is that the application the application secrets they are saved in a key vault as well. So you get also the installation of an Azure key vault, um, uh, which is, is a secure enclave of your secrets and the certificates, uh, and it also goes there. So it, it's kind of following uh, the best practice also. Uh, uh, to put this uh, solution uh, up and running. Maybe I want to show also how the code looks like. And this is the code out of the box. As you can see, there is the admin side. Uh, and uh, you can see that this um, uh, model view controller kind of application, uh, pretty straightforward to navigate to. You can have the home controller with all the the action that you that you need. You still have the possibility to customize it as you want, if you don't like, uh, according to your coding guidelines in the company, a function uh, or a method that needs to be no more than something, or I don't know, you can refactor that if you want to. Then you have the customer side, same discussion. Uh, you do have uh, the views, uh, it can be the home uh, controller views, uh, or uh, the controller is here, home controller. And you do have all the logic. Um, I mean, this is pretty uh, pretty easy to use, I will say, and uh, it's really straightforward. Uh, it's for someone with .NET experience, it's going to be pretty pretty easy to navigate with. Um, and another thing is also the webbook is uh, is basically here. Uh, everything is also out of the box. Um, no real implementation is needed. Uh, this is what I want to highlight. Data access, same discussion. Uh, you do have uh, the entities uh, already uh, there uh, in the database, mm-hmm. so no real implementation also here. And then you have also some other services. Those services can be uh, even for your uh, uh, email, uh, if you want to get the email. You can customize the template in the email if you want to. Uh, 
Oh, uh, that's nice. Yeah, but it is it is for yourself. Yeah. So yeah, I don't yeah. know. Um, it's not really maybe marketing kind of. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so let me go back now on the slides. What I wanted to show is uh, the private offer. Um, so in the Asian marketplace, let me go back to the to the homepage. So I have the marketplace here. And uh, as you can see, a uh, beautiful marketplace with many offers uh, and some, all of them, they are public. I can uh, basically create them uh, right away. Or if I get the private offer, I have this menu item here, private offer management. And this is when you are as a customer in your Azure portal. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Just so everyone is, uh, you're not yes. on the marketplace right now. You are as a customer in your Azure portal. And this is where you can then access the, ISV solutions from Azure Marketplace. Exactly. Okay. Um, and here, as you can see, I have private offer management. If I click on it, I have some contracts here and, uh, and uh, I can click on an offer. Your solution, you could target to a specific customer and then it would only be that customer finding the private offer in their Azure portal. Okay. That's yes. pretty cool features. You can just click on the private offer and you don't have to search and blah, 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 yeah, all, yeah. all that way around yeah. huh? So you get created what we call a private product mm -hmm. is tailored for you. So you accept the offer, it creates a private product product. And the once you have created the product, uh, private product, then you can then purchase the, the solution and then you subscribe here basically. And then that solution will just end up on the invoice. The customer has either directly from Microsoft or through their CSP provider. Yeah. A Exactly. That and could be error. That could exactly be error. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that I was pointing towards the <laughs> yeah. or one of Arrow's resellers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. and actually, we'll take from from what you just uh, finished to say because um, you have several possibilities to sell your solution yes. into the marketplace. Uh, from I would say a business perspective, a market, uh, a margin uh, perspective. So. This is what normally happen or usually happen. Uh, <clears throat> so it is that the ISV uh, is selling uh, the solution for, in this case, it's just uh, a random value, $100 to the customer that they have. Uh, the customer pays uh, the Microsoft, um, pay the, um, the Microsoft this $100. Uh, Microsoft will retain 3% as an agent fee But of course, we'll do the currency conversion and we'll do the tax calculation for you. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, Microsoft will pay the ISV at the end. Uh, it's a common scenario, but it's not the one that is uh, the only one used. Uh, many are using also CSP provider. Mm -hmm. And, and I think what market. we see is that a lot of ISVs will go for all three versions so that they will have a, it's not called dual strategy, then trial strategy that they will both do the direct CSP, the yeah, indirect yeah. reseller CSP, which Arrow can talk more about, I think, in the next session we yeah, have, yeah. and the direct one. So it's not like they, they cannot uh, coexist. No, they, they don't have to choose one. Exactly. They in parallel. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, this is pretty powerful as well, right? I think so. Uh, because they don't have to worry uh, on, uh, on all the customer base that they have, but they do rely on someone that is already on the market, that has already the right contacts and so on. Yeah, exactly. And this is actually the case of the CSP, uh, the um, CSP cloud solution provider. Um, and uh, the ISV now will sell their solution to the CSP. Then the CSP, and this is happening outside the marketplace, will uh, get the money out from the customer. Uh, and then the CSP will pay Microsoft. Uh, and uh, and Microsoft will then retain the three percent. Same discussion as before, and then uh, the ISV will get the money. But this time it will be with uh, a little bit less margin because they need to pay the CSP. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that margin, the twenty percent, is just a uh, uh, hypothetical one. Yes. VXC don't interfere with whatever margin no. you as an ISV partner agrees with the. Yeah, that is something partner. that we usually discuss with yes. with the ISV for what margins should should we have and. Yes. Um, yes. But I think it's quite common to give some kind of kickback to the partners that uh, is reselling and now it just goes through a system. Yeah. 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 And the other options, uh, other option is basically <coughs> the, uh, in, the, in the model of the CSP, but it could also be that the CSP has also another reseller uh, in, the, in, the, in the frame and then, uh, and then 
you know, it gets a little bit longer, the process. But but uh, the value is here then that you have an even bigger reach than you would by only having the direct relationship. You suddenly have a uh, pool CSP partners that you can scale through. Yeah, correct, exactly. correct. And also here, I believe it's a great possibility for a nice V to to grow uh, massively. Yeah, uh, yeah. we're gonna talk a lot about more in the next session. Yes, so, yeah. but this yes. is also more from the technical uh, angle, how the money flows through the <coughs> yeah, system, exactly. so to say. Yeah. yeah, yeah. From a demo perspective, I believe I will. Um, uh, We went through a little bit this already. Uh, I want to I want to uh, touch upon uh, two uh, other topics, and the first one is the geographic location of your um, your company uh, and how uh, you can market uh, and um, your solution and and uh, the cash flow that you might get from Microsoft. How do you handle that from a tax perspective as well? Mm -hmm. uh, and also maybe I will end up with. Um, Uh, the SaaS accelerator for uh, multiple uh, geographical legal locations that you might have. Um, mm. Okay, from a from a geographic perspective, um, this is the typical situation that that um, happen at least uh, in Denmark. What did happen is that your solution or your company is located in Denmark, uh, but you do have now suddenly a customer in the um, in Canada. Mm -hmm. So what you normally do, you will send a private offer in Canada and then the Microsoft uh, will bill and invoice the customer. Uh, but as you can see on the step three, they will bill and invoice the customer based on the on the, um, uh, on taxes that are in Denmark. It also means that they also pay in a in a bank in Denmark. Yeah. Uh, what the, what we have noticed with the, with big companies is that they do have legal entities, uh, not only in Denmark. They do have legal entities, for instance, in Canada. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you say big companies, is that then the ISV or the ISVs? Yes, ISVs, okay. big companies. Yeah. 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 Um, so some com ISV companies have pro legal entities. Exactly. Yes. That also means that they do sell in that specific country. They do pay that specific country ta taxes the, and they do have payouts in that specific country normally with customers in the traditional way so they they might be interested on on, on getting the money from that specific country and the f cash flow uh, um, in that specific country as well so they will they will be regulated by the local taxation instead of being regulated by an external tax taxation like from Denmark right mm -hmm. um You can do that in the Asian marketplace. This is also mind blowing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, um, you can. Uh, if you, you can, if you have a legal entity somewhere else, um, yeah. because right. you can decide to say, okay, I want to. Um, I have a legal entity in Denmark. I will market my solution in Europe, uh, but as soon as I go in Canada, since I have another legal entity in Canada with the specific taxation and so on, I will create this new business location, as we call it. Oh. Um, in, in the business location, you are that is in partner center that you're creating that. Exactly, yes. exactly. And f as far as uh, for one click uh, away, right, is uh, is really easy to do that. So it's still your headquarters under your partner account, yeah. ISV for Denmark, but then you just make a business location under that that will have its own legal entity if you have that in what... The real world, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah of course, yeah, in, <laughs> outside <laughs> partners in the world, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, and 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 one thing that you need to do now is uh, create a new tax profile for the country where you want to sell the solution with. In this case is Canada, so you need to create a tax uh, profile in Canada and a payout profile in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, and what it will happen is that this time your taxation is not anymore going to uh, Denmark, but you're going to Canada. That's pretty cool. It's really cool. Super cool. And another thing that I believe is nice to note from a geographical uh, um, uh, uh, discussion is we do also have a marketplace in China. Okay. Yes. And there is a link here uh, that I will advise you to 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 look into. Uh, I believe that uh, um, is. Uh, slightly different than the traditional Asian marketplace. Um, Uh, because as you might know, there are different regulations in uh, in China. Yeah. Uh, but I do believe uh, that 
uh, we we have also an extra edge here um, because we are capable of also uh, selling solution the marketplace in in uh, in, uh, in China, and we do use partners for doing that. Oh. Of course, that are yeah, local yeah, yeah. partners. Yeah. Um, That's nice. So uh, yes, That's it is, cool. and we do have a preferred partners also there. So it's a good possibility also there. Um, so from a SaaS accelerator perspective, uh, I believe. Uh, since you have different business location, you will also have different people looking at the subscriptions. Um, and uh, I, I just want to highlight that from the partner center, you can create uh, several business location. In this case, it's not Italy, it's France. Um, but, you know, maybe I got into my <laughs> heritage, <laughs> heritage <laughs> here. Uh, it's France. Um, and uh, you create a different tax profile and payout profile for each one of them. Uh, and then you put in the marketplace. You do a new deployment of the SaaS accelerator uh, for Canada, and another one is for France, and then you are there up and running uh, in both countries. Yes, I think the point is here that, again, the marketplace is uh, quite an extensive platform, so it opens up for whatever business setup you actually have yeah. uh, is supported in the marketplace. Yeah, um, absolutely. And all yeah. this is very well described in our documentation. Yes, um, Yes. So there is uh, plenty of possibility to dive into this deeper if your setup is uh, is in a way that this makes sense for you. Yes. Um, so the question I always get is, uh, but how long is it going to take? Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, um, I have this uh, uh, project plan kind of overview. Um, it's not s- uh, set in stone. I would say it's not. It's not. Uh, um, from a time perspective, is not the same for everyone. No, but uh, I would say the time also really depends on the ISV itself. So how available are they? How much um, time can they spend within a certain week? Uh, can make it go very fast or can take it make it very long if they don't prioritize it, basically. Exactly. And, and um, what I've seen so far is uh, the fastest ISV, you put it the solution uh, in uh, less than a week. Uh, wow. So like three days, four days, uh, but they were full committed uh, with that, and w- they were only working on that. Uh, but usually, I will say the average is around um, ten days, um, and uh, but that's wor- also because there's some process time back from our uh, marketplace yeah. team towards the ISVs and so True. on. True, and and um, if you recall from the previous session. If you didn't hear about the previous Another session, recommendation. <laughs> 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 then, then um, the, the putting an offer in the marketplace requires marketing, legal, um, it requires uh, technical people, requires pricing models. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so it also depends on how much you have prepared exactly. upfront. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and and uh, interactions, meetings takes time. Um, so um, I, I just want to highlight is not really uh, a blocker, you know, uh, the technical part is not really a blocker, you know, uh, creating an offer as such is maybe uh, what it requires time is the alignment between uh, people and having the process in place. Yeah. Um, and um, I actually think what we see most ISV spending most time on is kind of aligning their pricing model to how they should choose the pricing model in the marketplace. Also because it's so important because that's how you're going to get paid. Mm. Um, so I actually think that's the one where we see them spending the most time and where they probably also should. Exactly. Um, so the first step that you normally do is to create what we call a draft offer. Draft offer offer is a ready to use offer, but is visible basically only to you and you can do all kind of, um, modification and you can update stuff and you can test the technical part of it um, and uh, the first ever tests they will do you will do tax profile payout profile you will be ready with the marketing and legal uh, part of it um, and uh, and then you create a draft offer where you add the developer to the solution um, I put it here that it takes a week uh, it depends uh, on the size of the of yeah, the ISP yeah, as yeah, well. Um, then the technical set- setup, SAS accelerator, um, you can use OS accelerator or Mona, where you have um, already everything uh, ready to use. Um, it's a kind of I put it a week. Uh, I believe it could be less, but it depends yeah, uh, all the yes. time. Um, then you are ready for the tests. Um, you go in a, in a state. So uh, the submission flow. Um, 
uh, of up to uh, the publisher sign off, it takes at most 40 minutes to deploy uh, the, the offer itself. So you can even test it on the Asian marketplace uh, or web or, uh, or the portal. Then when you are ready and you have tested all the flow end to end, in order to make it public, you go live and it might take up to two days because there are um, there is a combination of um, automatic validation of your solution and uh, uh, manual validation. Uh, the automatic validation is, of course, that you didn't put anything um, wrong in this uh, in the text that you have submitted, uh, that you have covered all the required fields, uh, and then the manual validation is going to be a, li- a little bit more detailed. But at the most two days, I have never seen that it takes two days. It takes much less, but better to be in the in the yeah better safe than sorry <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> yeah all right good um, to know then you you do the private let's say that you have a customer and then you have the private offer uh, transactable and then you can test it uh, you can create the private offer uh, you have the pricing ready you test it um, and then uh, when you test it and then you have the private offer you send it to your customer then you can really um, test it with your customer as well does it work? Did you get the offer? Uh, did you subscribe? Can I activate you? Something like that. Mm-hmm. I believe this is a, a flow that you would normally do for your first private offer. Then, as soon as you do your first one, it's like you know going on a bike. Then you yeah. never forget. No, exactly. <laughs> 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 yes. Um, I, one thing that I want to note, and that I believe uh, then uh, Ida is gonna uh, uh, deep dive into it, is the IP cell. Um, and the IP cell, there are some specific requirements that you need to fulfill. That I believe Ida will uh, cover later on. Uh, I will just take later on a little touch on the technical aspects of the IP cell. What is required mm-hmm. uh, from a Microsoft perspective in the next session? Yes, in the next session. Ta-da! Yeah, ta-da! <laughs> and please don't forget the first session. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of advertising is happening here. Yes, 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 cool. (laughs) Yeah, I think basically the message is that it's, even though it can seem a little bit uh, busy on these slides, it's actually a quite straightforward process. Uh, There's a lot of documentation that we also have a program we will introduce in the next call uh, called the ISV Success Program, where there's also support for you guys for the publishing process. Uh, and besides that, I know that Arrow has uh, all good kind of uh, documentation that can also help yeah. you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So you should not uh, fear this. You should see it as a quite easy way to uh, get a new sales channel. Yes. And also um, also pretty useful to know that uh, there is us as Microsoft, there is Arrow. Uh, yeah. And so you are not alone no. uh, in this, uh, this yeah. process. We are yeah. here to help. Yes, exactly. Uh, but I think this was a good um, kind of overall technical introduction to what it requires yeah. and the possibilities. And then, uh, I mean, next step for you guys would be to dive into the documentation. Exactly. Yes. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Massimo, for the uh, for the walkthrough on the technical side. And Ida, thank you for attending as well. So, um, as you guys probably know, there will be a third session for this call. So, thank you, everyone. And uh, have a nice day to you listeners out there. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Husk, du kan finde links og mere materiale i podcastens episodebeskrivelse. Tak fordi du lyttede med. Ha' en skøn dag. Har du ønsker til en podcast, vi endnu ikke har lavet? Så send os en besked.